these deep lakes are populated by a race of giant underwater humanoids. Russia is a home to a great number of mysteries, each one stranger than the other. The following case is no exception. Although these particular events have been happening for thousands of years, the story begins in the 1930s when a Russian researcher of the paranormal named Ilya Grabovsky was exploring strange happenings around Lake Isik Kul, a deep body of water located in the northern Tian Shan Mountains. Isik Kul means warm lake, a reference to the fact that the lake never freezes despite being surrounded by icy mountains. Gravovsky had heard legends about hidden caves in the area, so he contacted a local who had inadvertently stumbled into one. At first, the man was reluctant to describe his experience, but the paranormal researcher eventually persuaded him to pass the knowledge, and he told Gravovsky that he and his friends were fishing on the lake's northwestern shore when they saw a cave. It was inaccessible, so they resolved to return the next day with ropes, torches, and pickaxes. The following day, the men began exploring the cave and inside, made a startling discovery inside its innermost sector. They discovered three human skeletons, each one measuring more than 10 feet tall. Around their necks, each skeleton had a silver amulet in the shape of what the men described as bats. An interesting aspect, since there have been several reports describing UFOs of this particular shape, not just in Russia, but also in the rest of the world. Even more intriguing is a local Kirzig legend that re references a sunken city at the bottom of Lake Isik Kul. The last ruler of the ancient city had been King Osunes, a giant with long ears. The legend also mentions that Osunes was able to fly between the mountain peaks in the blink of an eye. This discovery frightened them men enough to keep silent about it for years but not enough to leave the silver amulets behind. They melted the jewelry and sold the silver, but kept a small fragment as a memento. No photograph of this fragment survived to this day, but Grabowski would later write that the Soviet scientists who got the chance to examine it were unable to determine its exact age. Galvanized by the fisherman's admission, Grabowski decided to dig deeper into the mystery, rummaging through local archives he stumbled upon the earliest mention of similarly gigantic creatures dating back to the mid-1800s. A group of Georgian boys at the time, Georgia was part of the Russian Empire, were, divided, were diving for mussels in Lake Isik Kul when they happened upon the underwater entrance to a cave inside the nearby mountain. And as you probably guessed it, the cave was home to the last earthly remains of several giants. Despite his best efforts, Grabowski never found this cave, or maybe he did but kept silent. Either way, the official version is that he died without sharing the results of his work with the rest of the world, but that this is not the end of the story. In the early 1980s, Lake Isik Kul became the go-to place for Soviet testing of torpedoes, underwater missiles, and military diving equipment. It was also one of the places where the Soviet military conducted periodic training of the recon divers known as frogmen. Another location was the already infamous Lake Baikal. In 1982, during a frogman, a frogman training exercise in Lake Baikal, the divers encountered a group of strange underwater swimmers. The aquatic humanoids were enormous, more than 10 feet tall, and despite swimming in frigid waters, they wore nothing but tight-fitting silver suits Although the beings were spotted at a depth, of over, a depth of over 150 feet, none of them wore anything resembling scuba gear. They only, they only had sphere-like sphere helmets concealing their heads. Naturally, this encounter determined the Soviet military leaders to attempt to, an expedition to catch one or all of the underwater humanoids, and a group of seven frogmen was assembled and dispatched to the area. Former Afghan war veteran and author Mark Steinberg, who has extensively researched this case, recalls, as the frogmen tried to cover the creature with a net, the entire team was propelled out of the deep waters to the surface by a powerful force, 
because autonomous equipment of the frogmen does not allow surfacing from such depths without strict adherence to the process of decompression stops. All of the members of the ill-fated expedition were stricken by aroembolism or the Casson disease. The only remedial treatment available consisted of an immediate confinement under decompression conditions in a pressure chamber. They had several such pressure chambers in the military region, but only one in working condition. It could contain no more than two persons. These local commanders had forced four frogmen into the chamber. As a result, three of them, including the CO of the group, perished and the rest became invalids. As a direct result of this incident, Major General V. Madame Yenko, the commander of the USSR Military Dive Service, the Diver Service, was flown into the military base at Isik Kul to inform the local officers about the dangers of attempting to capture a giant underwater, the giant underwater humanoids. This serves as the evidence that the Soviet High Command was well aware of the presence of such creatures in both Lake Baikal and Isik Kul. Would they have issued an order against their capture if the creatures were not a real presence? Not long after that, the engineer forces of the Ministry of Defense issued a bulletin addressed to the staff headquarters at the Turkmenistan military region. The bulletin noted many other lakes were similar, where similar aquatic humanoid sightings had been reported, alongside the unusual flying disks and spheres ascending from and diving into the deep. This leads us into believing the incidents at Lake Baikal and Lake Isikul were not singular events, but rather expressions of a much wider phenomenon. The veracity of this incident is supported by the admission of Russian writer Mikhail Demidenko. After becoming familiar with Steinberg's account in 1992, Demidenko remembered spending time, some time at Lake Baikal in the mid-1980s on an assignment from the USSR Union of Writers. It was there that Irkutsk fishermen told him how they saw Soviet divers being thrown out of the water and continuing their ascent to a height of 30 to 50 feet above the water surface. The fishermen did not know about the underwater humanoid episode and had been wondering why the Soviet military subjected their divers to such tests. So is this case definitive evidence that Russian lakes are home to a race of gigantic aquatic humanoids? Not nearly enough, because more pe palpable proof is needed, but the continuous existence of legends and the admissions of retired high-ranking military officers, such as Colonel Vladimir Azaza, seem to suggest there is something lurking in the unexplored depths of our planet. And this is a lot of what uh, similar things claims that uh, ufologists and scientists be, uh, are uh, recently claiming. This is on Bended Reality. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.